In this video, we're gonna look at two of the top contenders in the iPad lineup, the M3 iPad Air and the new M5 iPad Pro. Whenever you have these side by side, you can tell this is more than just a slight upgrade. These are two completely different iPads. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at everything that actually matters to help you pick which iPad is right for you. The biggest difference between the iPad Pro and the iPad Air is actually the display. The Air uses a high quality liquid retina LCD display, which looks great and it's very pixel dense, but the iPad Pro features the Ultra Retina XDR display, which uses tandem OLED technology, which means amazing blacks, incredible contrast, and also stunning HDR performance. This is something that you really notice in person because the screen of the iPad Pro just looks all that much more crisp with the contrast and the colors. Also, when it comes to brightness, the Pro is a clear winner. The Air Max is out at about 600 nits, and the Pro hits a consistent 1000 nits for SDR content, and can peak all the way at 1600 nits for HDR video. So this is almost double the brightness of the iPad Air. But the iPad Pro features ProMotion technology, which has an adaptive refresh rate, which will scale all the way up to 120 hertz, which just makes scrolling between apps, drawing, gaming, and watching videos feel so much smoother. Also, if you're a professional working under harsh light, then you can get the Pro with the nano texture glass on it, which is gonna reduce glare. You do have to get a one or two terabyte model to do this though. Let's talk processing next. The iPad Air has the M3 chip and the iPad Pro now has the M5 chip, which is actually two generations ahead of the M3 and is in a completely different class of performance in graphics and AI processing performance. Also, the RAM included in both of these is pretty different. The Air comes with eight gigabytes of unified memory. The Pro starts with 12 if you get the 256 or the 512 gigabyte capacity. If you get one or two terabytes on the iPad Pro, it's gonna jump all the way up to 16 gigabytes, which is a must if you're doing video editing or running professional applications. And it'll also help multitasking performance as well. Also, the M5 chip goes all the way up to 153 gigabits a second of memory bandwidth, which means that the chip can talk faster to the RAM. So it's just gonna have better multitasking performance across the board. Let's talk professional grade features. The Pro has several sensors and ports that the Air just doesn't have. Namely, the USB-C port on the Air is fast, offering 10 gigabits a second, but the Pro gives Thunderbolt or USB 4 speeds, which goes all the way up to 40 gigabits a second which is vital for connecting fast external drives or high resolution external monitors. And it's also gonna have more power coming out of it to power some of those faster SSDs that simply will not work on the Air. Also on the camera front, the Pro adds a LiDAR scanner to it, which enables superior augmented reality experiences and also better 3D depth mapping or scanning for some Pro app. It can also record ProRes video, which I'm not sure how many people actually use the iPad to record video, but the Air does not support that. Also, my favorite feature of the Pro is the fact that it actually has Face ID for unlocking, which is really nice compared to the Touch ID on the iPad Air. One last difference between the two of these, the Pro has four speakers and the Air has two speakers. And you definitely notice that the speakers on the Pro sound a lot better, even though the iPad Pro is actually thinner than the iPad Air. Both of these are available in an 11 or 13 inch display size, and the price on them will both go up significantly if you get the 13 inch display. With the iPad Air, it starts with 128 gigabytes of storage, which is fine for most people, but more storage is definitely needed if you plan on doing a lot on the iPad itself. The Pro starts with 256 gigabytes of storage right out the gate, which is nice to have that included. The iPad Air starts at $600 for the 11 inch model and goes up to $800 for the 13 inch. The iPad Pro starts at $1,000 for the 11 inch model, goes all the way up to $1,300 if you wanna get the 13 inch model. So you're gonna be spending quite a bit more if you get the iPad Pro over the iPad Air. Also, both of these have a magic keyboard you can get for them. The magic keyboard for the iPad Pro is a little bit nicer as it has an aluminum top, although it's also more expensive, but I do really prefer the Magic Keyboard of the Pro to the one of the Air. So who are these for? The M3 iPad Air is really a great choice for students, casual artists, or for most power users. It gives incredible performance, and it also supports the full Apple Pencil Pro experience at a starting price that comes in way lower than that of the Pro. But the M5 iPad Pro is really built for a creative professional. So if you want the best display, the fastest connection to external peripherals, better RAM, the ProMotion experience, then the M5 is the only choice for you. So if you're trying to decide between the two of these, you really need to look at your budget and your workflow. Do all those subtle quality of life experiences sound like they're worth spending quite a bit more on? And are you gonna use the Pro all day long or even just in longer spurts than you're gonna use the Air? In which case, I would really recommend buying the Pro. But if you really wanna have an iPad that just steps everything up a little bit over the base model iPad, that's where the Air comes into play because it still gives you that great M3 processor 
which is gonna be overkill for what most people are using an iPad for. But if you really wanna use it as a laptop replacement with Pro Power, you should go for the Pro and you'll really appreciate all those subtle quality of life experiences, the better display, the better speakers, things like that. So which iPad would you choose? The Pro M5 or the iPad Air M3? Let me know in the comments below which one you're interested in buying. And be sure to check out links in the description below for the best current prices on both of these.